It is. It's a Tuesday evening. Tiger Woods back in the news, buddy. It's it's Tiger Woods has his fifth back surgery. It's aka the uh, micro discectomy uh, pro oh, procedure uh, to remove a pressurized disc fragment or dick not dick disc fragment <laughs> that was pinching his nerve. Uh, doctors and team have determined it has been <laughs> to be a successful surgery, and expected him to make a full recovery. Jeff, I mean, when you saw this news, is this this has got to be bad for golf, right? It's, it's devastating for me because I need a reason to watch golf right now. I need a reason. I mean, Brooks coming back this week, you know, and Phil going to be there. And then you got Rory and JT on the other. So I, I'll watch more than I have this week. But Tiger is still the draw. He is still the fucking man. And when he pulls this shit and he kind of disappears for a little bit. So you kind of wonder what's happening. Like we're not seeing any posts or videos. No. Well, it's because he's under the knife again it just it they roll these tweets out like it's no big deal like oh hey by the way the most iconic golfer in the world ever uh, just went under the knife again and but you know my favorite quote is the doctors and team have determined it to be a successful surgery who the f- is the team part like and how many doctors are there like, this is crazy okay and how many times have they said this to him this is his fifth fucking time <laughs> was it was i mean i'm sure they told him it was successful those last times too it just, yet he, he keeps having to do it it put a fucking zipper back there okay put a zipper on his fucking spine <laughs> okay so he can go in every couple of weeks check things out <laughs> zip that shit back up and get him back on the fucking golf course i mean i the, golf needs him more than ever right now no fans no tiger i mean it is crazy but i I mean, we got to go back to 2017 when he came back to the hero after his his fusion of his back. I mean, he wins the 2018 Tour Championship at Eastlake. He goes on in the 2019, wins the Masters, and then goes on again in Korea, Japan, somewhere, and wins the 2019 Zozo Championship, tying Sam Snead for the all-time victories. I mean, if he has a back surgery every three years, like, is it worth it? Hey, maybe it's worth a couple victories. I mean, a couple but, of green jackets? But but he's so big to the game that I would rather, and I'm sure most of the world would rather watch him middle of the pack, maybe make the fucking weekend. It'd be nowhere near the lead. I'd still rather watch every shot he hits than the fucking leaders. Like, that's how big he is, and that's how much he's missed, especially early in this year. No fans. We need him back. So hopefully it's a quick recovery. We we do need him back. But I will, Jeff, I'm going to disagree with you. And it's it's been a common theory. But I say, good for you, Tiger Woods. Get that shit cleaned out, okay? Get get a new back put in there. I mean, maybe you could like, I don't know. I mean, technology these days. I mean, maybe get a new spine or something crazy. You know, get I, I'll, I'll get in there and start working some joints. But I think tiger being gone for a little while is going to help make all the other players realize like, Oh, we need this guy. And they're going to start, they're going to think like they thought back in 2017 where they're like, I'm I'm the man. And then, you know, Jordan Smith happens and completely just gets annihilated week after week and realize Tiger Woods is absolutely unhuman when it comes to uh, a guy on the golf course. Well, what, what popped up also was uh, the news dump of Ralph Lauren on Friday evening reporting that, uh, you know, they're just Justin, they're just dropping Justin Thomas after his, uh, his homophobic statement uh, at the, uh, at the, um, at Kapalua a couple weeks ago, Jeff, I mean, it's, it's one thing for a brand to drop someone and, 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 you know, punish him and really cost him some, some cash. But the more I think about it, it's I I want to say like Justin Thomas was probably this is probably a blessing in disguise. It might be signing a better deal with some other clothing line. Well, at some point, time's going to take its toll here, and and, and he's going to have take some lumps for a little while. But he's going to get past this. He is, and he's going to get another deal. But the thing I saw in Ralph Lauren's statement, which I I don't know if I've ever seen when athletes get dropped for saying something or doing something dumb, is they left it open for him to come back. Like that, that doesn't normally go in your statement saying that we don't like him so much for what he said, that we're going to drop him and nullify the contract. But if he gets his act right and he, and he behaves and he, he's a good boy, um, he has the opportunity to come back. 
Well, it, the statement was ultimately like, I don't want to offend anyone to include Justin Thomas. Like, I we're not going to offend you over here. We're not going to offend you over here. But like, we got to let you go. But we want you back. Like, it was just kind of, it was kind of ridiculous to be quite honest with you. And I know they got to protect their brand and their, you know, LG, you know, whoever groups and stuff. And that's great and everything. But it just seems like if you're that loyal to a guy, you kind of stick with him through the, uh, you know, the ups and downs in his, uh, in his particular career. It seems like a suspension would have been a better way for Ralph Lauren to go. If they're going to say, Hey, we will take you back at some point. Like, Hey, here's a suspension. He's the only guy in golf. I think that wears their stuff. Maybe him and Davis love every once in a while. I I don't know. I mean, it's not like they got a big hold on the golf game apparel. If you had to pick the next apparel sponsor for Justin Thomas, who would it be and why? Jeff, I, it's fucking the Aloha Press. I we're, we'll we'll, fucking, we'll get to the sweatshops, okay? We're, we're, I'm gonna ship my ass over to China, and we're getting shit done, okay? Uh, JT, what do you what do you like a 28, uh, 34? I mean, what, what what's the waist size? I mean, what are we what are we working with? I, I know you're up top, uh, probably like a a 22 uh, B, B cup. Uh, you know, you just you know, no. I mean, what, what's your you do you need a hat deal? Uh, what what is you? We already know you like shitty clothing, so like. The expectations aren't very high. Okay, you like dad color, so na- lots of navy, uh, some uh, some really really shitty hooded like s- sweater vest things, and uh, you know we'll get you a lot of white pants, um, and then we're gonna mix in, you know we'll, we'll talk to our boys over at Next Belt and and get you a belt deal, and then uh, you know for the uh, I, that that fucking whoop strap you wear on your arm, we're gonna add in some color and maybe get that actually tatted on your arm. Um, so I, I'm going with the Aloha Press. We're shipping his ass to China, hitting the sweatshops, and making some of his so, some of his apparel. We can pay him absolutely nine dollars a month. Uh, hopefully that will uh, his uh, criteria when it comes to his contract. And and to be honest with you, he can say whatever the fuck he wants. I don't give a shit. I, the more shit he says, like the horrible shit he says, the more we'll pay him. Every bad word he says on the golf course, I'll pay him a dollar. Um, so. Yeah, you're gonna, Jeff, have to I mean, this, you're gonna have the swear jar for him. Hey, you absolutely. got a pretty good answer. It, it, it's almost like you knew that was coming, but you didn't. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking a little different approach. I see him. He's not like your typical Nike, Under Armour, uh, you know, Ping. He, he's not gonna go to one of those big names. I see somebody like Jim Nance hopping on when everything dies down and giving him a little sponsorship from the Vineyard Vines collection looks just like polo i mean the same type of clothes right up his alley uh i think you can go hang out in pebble beach with jim on his days off they can get his wardrobe a lot of pinks and purples and blues and it's it just i i think that's where he's going a lot of salmon i i i agree with you i think jim nance will absolutely put him under his wing and just show him the way you know show him the you know the the sexy talk when he gets on the microphone i that would be absolutely crazy <laughs> I can't even imagine that. I, the more I think about it, like to give a real answer, I would love to see JT in something absolutely like a bit ridiculous. Maybe, maybe like John Daly's wardrobe, you know, some weird pants, you know, what are those pants called? Whoop pants or like uh, yeah, loud mouth we'll, pants. We'll, yeah. Loud mouth golf. <laughs> I, I just, with him, he's so, he's just so like, old school with his clothing. I don't, I just can't see him getting somebody like Oakley or like we said, Nike or Under Armour and being in something more athletic looking. Cause he's a little man. He's a very little man. I mean, you said a 28 inch waist, it might be like 26, you know, 26 thirties. I don't know. He's a very little guy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going with Jim Nance and how Jim Nance hasn't hooked Tony Romo. You know, they, they hang out in the booth together. How, how's he still wearing starter and sketchers? Well, I, I think Jim Nance has a little tighter budget. Maybe it's, you know, when you live at Pebble Beach, you, I I don't know what CBS pays broadcasters, but I know NBC doesn't pay him very much. So um, I, I would assume it's not very well.